What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking on another Swift algorithm, specifically binary search. Let's get started by dropping a like down below as per usual, and let's actually get started by creating a brand new Xcode playground that we are going to be implementing this in as soon as Xcode decides to cooperate. There we go. We're going to go ahead and call this playground binary search, a very, very popular searching algorithm. I'm going to go ahead and toss this onto my desktop and let's jump right in. So first and foremost, this is really useful for you know any basic interview prep. Searching is a critical aspect for a good majority of algorithms. Binary search is one which is a divide and conquer approach, as we'll see momentarily, and it's pretty simple to implement to you once you get an idea of what is conceptually going on. So the first thing to understand is that binary search is hinged on the idea that the collection you're searching, the array you're searching, is in sorted order. If it is not in sorted order, binary search falls apart uh, because of the assumptions that it makes. So that said, let's go ahead and create an array here. So we're going to say an array of, let's say, 1, 3, 4, 5, 12, 13, 22, 31, and I don't know, 71, 72. Let's go ahead and declare a function called binary search. It's going to take in the array we are going to be searching, which will be an array of integers just like that. It's going to be taking in the value we are searching for, and this function is going to return the index, index optional, int optional, if we found the index at which the value we're searching for resides. In other words, if we're searching for the value 4, this function should return 2. If we're searching for the value 5000, it'll return nil, because clearly 5000 is not a part of this array. So to satisfy this uh, error here, we're just going to start off by returning nil. Let me go ahead and bump up my font size here as well. And let's talk about what we need to do to actually uh, search this with binary search. So the concept of binary search is we're going to divide the array uh, with a middle point, which will be in the middle of the left and right pointers. In other words, we're going to start off with the left pointer here and the right pointer at the end here. We're going to find the middle index, so it'll be this one. So if it's an uneven number of elements, it is the middle index. Since it's going to be a, a decimal point, a floating point, we'll uh, round that down. And we're going to say if the value here is greater than what we're looking for, because the assumption is that this array is sorted, we know that if the value exists in this array that we're looking for, it has to be in this side. And vice versa, if it's greater than what we're looking for, it has to be in this side. So then we would either update the left pointer to be here or the right pointer, depending on which side we're going to look in. And then we'll do that process over and over until our two pointers collide. Now, that said, one last important thing to note, this algorithm can be implemented both iteratively with the while loop and recursively. Both have pros and cons. Today, we're going to be doing it iteratively with a while loop. So let's get into it. So we're going to start off by declaring our left pointer at zero, the index that the collection starts with. One good thing you should probably actually also do is check if your array uh, is empty, because if the array is empty, there's no point in even, uh, you know, searching the array. So we're going to return nil if the array is empty. So we're going to guard that the array that we're searching is not empty, a good edge case to take care of. Next up, we're going to say left is zero. We're going to say right is going to be array.count minus one, which is the rightmost index of our collection. And like I mentioned, in a while loop, we're going to say while left is less than or equal to right, we're going to go ahead and try to figure out uh, if we need to move the left pointer or the right pointer and move it accordingly. So the first thing we want to do is get the middle index. So the middle index is going to be left plus right divided by two. Now we can go ahead and convert this to a double and round it down uh, manually. However, because our left and right here are integers, and I'll actually explicitly put it there, the language will take care of doing this for us. So we're gonna say add left plus right and divide that by two. It'll give us the middle index. We're gonna get the middle value now from the array at middle index, and now we can do all of our comparison checks. So we're gonna say if the middle value 
is greater than the value we're looking for. And value here, keep in mind, is the argument we're passing in, which is what we are searching for. If this thing is greater than what we're searching for, we know, again, looking at this example array, taking, let's say, 13 as an example, if this is bigger than 4, we know that we need to start looking at this side. So left, the left pointer doesn't need to change, the right pointer does. So in this case, we're going to say that the right is going to be the middle index minus 1. Now, why minus 1? Well, we know that the middle number isn't equal to the value since we're checking explicitly less than, so we can simply decrement it. Uh, on the other hand, we're going to do basically the opposite. So we can get away with copy and pasting. We're going to say if the middle value is less than the value that we are searching for, we need to move the left pointer up by one. So it's going to be middle index plus one. And finally, the other case is if basically the value has been found, you can explicitly do an else if here. I'm just going to keep it as else. Middle value in this case equals your value. We are going to go ahead and return the middle index. So in other words, if we come to this point where, you know, they're equal, and let me actually just add it here explicitly so it makes more sense. If middle value is our value, we know we found it, therefore go ahead and return the index. And that is literally all that we need to do to get binary search up and working. Now, before we actually revisit the while loop here, let's go ahead and give this a test and make sure that it actually works so we don't have anything weird going on in here. So let's go ahead and say index um, for, let's see, let's call this found index. And we're going to go ahead and say binary search over this array for the value uh, for three, for the value of three. And we're going to go ahead and say print out found index. And because this thing is going to give us optional, we're going to go ahead and say otherwise it's going to print out negative one, implying that we didn't find it. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Hopefully we don't have any syntax errors in here. And we should see the index that the three is at, which of course is two. Let's see if we have any errors. We do not. Playgrounds decide to be slow sometimes. There we go. All right, so we get one printed out here, which is actually correct. I misspoke. The index of value three is at one, since enumerated by zero. So zero, one, two. Let's try something on this side. Let's say we're looking for 31. So let's go ahead and key in 31 here. We expect to get a higher index. I believe it'll be, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We expect to get index 7 out, which in fact we do. And finally, we're going to go ahead and search for some random number that's not in this array. We should get negative 1 out since we are using that as a default value if the found value uh, is in fact nil. So we get negative 1 and we can validate that this definitely works. So then now before we wrap up here, let's just go through this uh, algorithm really quickly one more time. So first we check our base case. So we're going to be saying, you know, if the array is empty, we don't need to search anything kind of silly. So just go ahead and return nil. Another thing we could actually also do if you really want to get nitty gritty is we can say if array dot count uh, is one and you can go ahead and say return if the element in array uh, for the zero index, so the first element, equals equals value, right? There's no need to even get to this while loop. If we only have one element in this array, we can simply return if that element equals the particular value. Now let's see why this is giving me an issue. So this is basically saying we can't return um, the Boolean basically instance of this. So we're gonna say if the first element in this is the value, we can go ahead and return zero. Otherwise, we can simply return nil. Now, why are we doing this? Is because if the first value is what we're looking for, go ahead and return that index. Otherwise, it's going to return nil. Then we move down to the while loop, which is the meat of this algorithm. So we get start with a left pointer at zero, right pointer at the edge right of the collection, so the rightmost index. We're going to validate while left pointer is less than or equal to right, because if they collide, they've gone past each other, no need to do more work. We're going to get the middle index, and we're going to rely on the fact that left and right are integer types, which is pretty important here since we don't want to have a uh, floating point. So let's say you have a collection of 9 and you divide that by 2. You don't want to get 4.5. Instead, what you'd be getting is 4, just by the nature of these things being integers. 
Next, we get that value, we do our comparison, and we either move the right or the left accordingly, and if we've found the value, we simply return the index. A common mistake people will make is actually returning the value. Keep in mind what the question is asking of you not to return the value, but the actual index. And of course, if we go through the entire while loop and we didn't find it, we can simply go ahead and return nil because we have not found it, and that is the end of our algorithm. So that is all I've got for you guys today. I've got a lot more iOS interview prep algorithms, data structures, system designs coming for you. I'm working on a premium uh, platform actually with a lot of iOS interview specific content. So if you're into that, stay tuned, drop a like, comment any questions down below, subscribe if you're new here to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.